So I was making my way, trying to find my composition for this trip. <sighs> it's hard because there's the conservationist in you saying, no, you need to stay on trail and everything like that because it's such a fragile subalpine terrain. And then there's a photographer in you saying, but I want to get the composition. I want to get it. So I've got about half an hour until actual sunset in order to find my composition. So, and came across a bunch of other photographers at the main lookout. And I don't know about you, but I want something a little bit different, even just a different perspective than everybody else. Just cause you're gonna see that same type of image placid all over social media and whatnot. So gotta stay different. So far, a very different perspective than what everybody else is getting and I'm excited. So I'm hoping that it's fruitful and I'm able to find a foreground that I like. I'd rather not just do the mountain and the Milky Way because I mean, where's the fun in that? And that's a very obvious subject. And kind of liking the challenge of finding a composition right now. So here's an idea. Right behind me is like a little rock ledge with a mountain behind. And there's an actual trail out. Uh, it's probably man-made versus like National Park Service made, but it's there. Um, I think it'd be so cool to have somebody out on that ledge and like doing uh, flashlight up in the air and get the whole lightsaber effect. Um, unfortunately, I'm solo and I didn't bring a flashlight, I brought a headlamp, so it's not quite as effective. So, something to keep in the old noggin for maybe later on, but oof. Look at that light behind me. It's just coming right across, got those layers, and it's just, ah. <sighs> We're definitely in the golden hour time, so gotta hurry up and find something. So what I'm doing right now is I found a foreground that I like, which is gonna be this stump here. Um, it's nice, it's not too large for the scene. So what I'm doing is I am layering this with a layer of this hill uh, with that rock cropping in the background. And then up above that is uh, the mountain. Um, and that puts me right about my top third of the frame, which would be great for um, the Milky Way. What I can do later on is I may be able to do horizontal and stitch side by side to get everything in, get a little bit more of that sky, that Milky Way, or worst case scenario, I can go ahead and just go vertical, get that uh, stump in the foreground and then a layer, maybe a little bit more higher like so, instead of so down low. That way they're not all in the same plane, a little bit more separated and then the mountain and do the Milky Way. So that's the plan. Um, let's see what photo pills are saying for where the Milky Way is gonna be at. So as of right now in my photo pills app, I'm gonna go into my planner. Um, it's relatively in the spot that I'm currently at. Let's go ahead and update this to where I'm currently at. Zoom in a little bit. And let's take the date and time to now. So you can see we're right at golden hour and there's some really nice uh, light there on the mountain. And it's a little too harsh for my liking and there's no clouds in the sky. So I'm not bothered with shooting sunset tonight. Uh, I'm just looking at finding my foreground and everything. So the time that the galactic core should line up is right around between 12.30 and 1.30, probably look more like 1 a.m. So let's go ahead and open up night AR, go up to the mountain, 
Let's change my focal length up probably closer to a 26 than anything. So this is what it's looking like right now. So if I come down into my perspective, that's at 1244. So if bring down at 1230, be nice and low on the mountain. Get closer to one, to one and 130 is really where that sweet spot's gonna be for the Milky Way. So what we're gonna be dealing with is because there's no clouds in the sky. I'm not worried about shooting sunset because there's nothing to help catch the eye, nothing to help the scene besides just my foreground elements. So what my goal is, is because it's a new moon, it's great for the start of Milky Way season, there's no, no light gonna be shining on the foreground after sunset. There's not gonna be any moon, it's like, 2.1% and that's going to be right in the middle of the day. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do what's called a twilight blend. So I'm going to focus up on my foreground, get it all nice and composed how I want it. And then once the sun actually sets, it, that's going to be the blue hour, twilight. So I'm going to take a photo of my foreground here. I'll probably take quite a few depending uh, just throughout blue hour up until astronomical twilight and actually nighttime, the dark time. So that way I have a lot to play with. And then what I'll end up doing is once it's actually dark and it's starting at 12.30, going to 1.30, break out the star tracker. Ooh. This beast. I just realized I don't know if I've got batteries for it. I may have logged you out here for no reason. <laughs> Yay! It's the luck of the draw. A few moments later. <laughs> no batteries. Yeah. So it turns out, in my haste to get out the door, because I wasn't originally going to shoot tonight, but things lined up to where I could last minute come out and shoot and hustled out the door and I forgot my intervalometer. Forgot batteries for my star tracker and forgot my bear spray. <sighs> Sometimes that's just how it goes. So the sun has officially set over in the west. As you can see here, there's a nice glow on the mountain, um, and that's actually starting to dissipate. There is a little bit of banding on either side of the mountain. Nothing crazy. So now what I'm gonna be doing is, because I'm so close to my foreground element, I'm actually gonna take and focus stack several images along through the frame. And I'm gonna take several of those so I can stack those in, later in Photoshop to reduce the amount of noise that's in the image. So this way I'll maintain all dynamic range in the foreground and I won't lose any of that detail. So let's go ahead and get cracking. So back of the car now, can't quite see the mountain anymore, but sunset's done. You can see the last remnants of it behind me. Um, so yeah, gonna hang out, have some pizza for dinner. Just probably get a nice little cat nap in. Change plans actually. So instead of hiking back out to that original viewpoint, I opted instead just to shoot the Milky Way itself from the primary parking lot and that viewpoint. Reason being is that I didn't feel comfortable with the tools that I had with me today to go back over that snow, especially at night without anybody else with me. So it came down to uh, safety mitigation and safety is always first. So. 
it's going to be more of a composite for this image uh, with the previous foreground and then taking the Milky Way from the shot at the parking lot and combining them to post as a composite. So it's a little cold and I'm not next to my camera right now to so make sure that I don't blind everybody else and ruin their shots. Um, hence the red light making it work. Um, so found some batteries in the car but caveat being I forgot my adapter to mount my ball head to <laughs> the mount for the, st the star tracker. So instead what I'm doing is I'm actually going to do a two for, I'm going to do a time lapse. Um, that way I can get a bunch of photos of the stars and I'll stack them again. Um, they're not going to be super bright and super crisp because the ISO is at like 3200 right now. Um, so when I walked away from the camera, I am at settings. Uh, shutter speed is at 30 seconds um, and I'm not having any star trail movement with it. It's all nice and perfect. Um, F-stop of 2.8 and uh, an ISO of 3200 and it's giving me some really good histogram um, and setting up for a time lapse. Um, every 35 seconds it's going to take a picture, 30 second picture, and it's going to do 500 of those. So I'm trying to make it out to where the battery essentially dies, but so I can pick a still out of that by combining all the pictures and stacking or make a star trail out of it or even time lapse. Experiencing the Milky Way under a clear night sky is always a sight to see. Now while this particular occasion had many obstacles and blunders, I was still able to come back with a halfway decent final image. There are still a couple techniques that I need to work on, such as focusing at night, but the Milky Way season is just now rearing into gear. So I think I have some time to keep working on that. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to go down and like the video or dislike it if that's how you feel. And don't forget to subscribe to follow along on any other adventures that I might take. See you in the next video and goodbye for now.